since we do not have a quorum, we'll just handle this as a work session. Uh, there's a number of people out of town and in, uh, under some splendor of the weather. Um, we cannot do approval of minutes uh, for the previous uh, the previous meeting. Um, Senator, I guess if you want to go ahead sure. and do a uh, director of tourism report. Okay. Um, so we have um, the numbers to review uh, in front of you. I'm, I apologize, Bob. Okay. In front of you. Now you have two. You have um, the summary of the um, visitors to the Welcome Center um, for the month and I actually have a data figure. Um, the individual total in May was 2,604 guests. Um, that is 19% higher than May of last year. And then um, the group visitors was um, 566 groups in May, which uh, last year was 340. Um, year to date is 703, so you can see that May was the bulk of our group business. Um, and you can see in those spikes that 2011 was a really strong year in May. Um, but we, we just got into a positive year to date uh, compared to last year. Year to date. Hello there. Yes. How about would you like a report? So that you know what we're talking about? Yeah. Nice t-shirt. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Lauren. I like it, Lauren. <laughs> we're, uh, since we don't have a problem, we're doing just a work what session. Oh, okay. okay. So our group visitors are up. Um, did your school program, did you get some new schools this year that we hadn't had previously? We had a couple of new high schools, like high school French clubs. We made a list of all the French-related programs in the area, and um, we did pretty well on our schools returning that came last year, and then we picked up a few um, new schools like that. Um, I'd like to kind of continue that. We had some schools this year that didn't come because they because of snow days, they were behind on their number of required days and they were trying to get them all in. So we did have um, a little better participation locally too. I'm not 100% sure, but I, uh, Valley Grade School came uh, and brought several of their different ages of classes. And I don't think that they've done that or maybe not to that extent in the past. So we were really glad about that. Of course, they participated in the Ecole de Soldat activities, and they also did the passport. So um, I think next year we're planning, the Ecole's planning to do St. Jen mm -hmm. grade school. Uh, similar. Mm -hmm. so, we haven't gotten the passport revenue yet. That's next. So um, Should there be a relationship between passport sales and any of the other data? I mean, it seems it, like it should, there's a direct relationship between that and our revenues and expenses. I know I'm speaking in terms of groups and adult groups and individual. Uh, if you have more groups, are, shouldn't you have more passport sales? Possibly. Well, Some groups, groups decide to only go to groups. one or two of the places. They, you know, because they, they really customize what the group wants in terms of, of that. Correct. And we count our group passports separately um, so that it doesn't skew our individual passport data. So are these individual? Those are individual. Oh, yeah. we'll go and there wouldn't be a relationship. But it's in general, as Bob said, it's just not as common for a group to do mm -hmm. passports as individuals. Um, okay, so in May we had 148 adult and 235 student. And um, for adults, that's pretty consistent. Last year it was 138, so it was up 10. Um, but in students, it's quite a bit higher. We had 285 student passports, and last year, 93. You know, again, I've, I noticed during that time period, we were seeing more uh, younger families in town. Mm -hmm. I mean, just watching people on the street than we, we normally see. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, again, as we move, you know, we've always targeted the 
35 to 55 year old person. We just need to continue to look, continue to look at ways to enhance the young family experience when they come here with things for little kids mm -hmm. to do. Thanks so for back to my question. If this is individual, there should be a relationship between the increase in visitors and passport sales. I know every visitor doesn't buy passports, but right. relatively speaking, there should be. That is true, and for um, students, quite a few of these are in groups, obviously, the student passports, as opposed to there weren't 285 children of parents who came. This includes the student passports in groups. But, but the, in, the adult passport doesn't include groups. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. If it does, it's a very small number. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't. And I realize that's an inconsistency. Um, so we were pleased with May. We probably won't pa uh, report on student passports during the summer months because if there are any, they will be, you know, children with parents kind of a thing. We'll track them, but we just probably won't report on them because it won't be very significant. Um, and then the next one is the revenues and expenses, and I apologize that that printed out uh, sideways, but that's really hard to see it. But um, okay, um, thank you. So our in the month of May, our tour revenue was. Four thousand three thirty-three, and expenses was four thousand four seventy-five. That just means that we happened to pick up an invoice in May that we didn't pick up in an earlier month because the month before was five hundred dollars high on the revenue, so it was probably an expense that we paid in May. Um, we had one hundred and twenty-four dollars in um, printing, um, and. That we also tracked the Tourism Tax Commission uh, revenue line item. They had uh, about two hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Yeah, that was that's very low. I mean, if you look back through the year, and I know that some of them pay quarterly and some pay um, monthly. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we took the August meeting, we only have all the numbers through June. At August? Oh, yes. Yeah, because they have to. It's thirty days after the end of the right. Uh, Text. So this isn't, we're not even 30 days after the end of May, I imagine that's probably not the final number. Right, right, that's, that's an interim number. Right. But it's, it's down quite a bit, I mean, if, if to hit 20,000, which was the budget, um, we really need to look at what happened in June to see if we got a chance of hitting that. I, we've got, I think the Tourism Tax Commission has enough money in their budget because of carryover to do what we wanted to do this year, but I think we were planning on 20,000. Uh, income. I know January and February were slow for most people because of the weather. But, uh, so it, it'll be interesting to see the June numbers. Well, everybody has told me that they had an incredible May, so I would yep. expect that the tax revenues will be up correspondingly. And every weekend so far, uh, one of the property, one of the B&Bs has contacted me that they have rooms available this coming up weekend. But every weekend so far, they've been sold out. So. I would expect that we're going to be making all the revenue we possibly can since they're sold out every weekend. Um, but well, about 67% of it comes from uh, my, uh, the motels mm -hmm. on that. Uh, B and B's only contribute about 33% historically. Mm -hmm. okay. And I know that the microtel has been sold out recently too. Um, just uh, kind of a heads up, you know, we talked about looking at the, all the charts one time a year, and so that will be the August meeting, which will be an, at, an evening meeting, and then just kind of so you can start mm -hmm. working on, on how we're going to do that presentation. Um, we might want to do that down at the um, Tisha's building since it's easier to do slides and stuff down there than it is here. Long range, it would sure would be nice to have a projection system in here. Hmm. I'll do that instead of buying the replacement batteries for this uh, the tornado sirens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
we'll do a bait and switch on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just priorities. <laughs> I, I realize that. It's just a long-term dream. So all data through June? Yes. Um, and this will be the annual review? Correct. Yeah. I'll talk to um, Sue and Pam because a lot of that. Yeah, Sue will have hers, you know, in yeah. July. You probably won't get uh, the uh, the July the numbers from Pam until just the early, very early part of August because mm -hmm. they have that whole month of July to pay. Mm -hmm. um, before we move on to the next item, um, this was something that I just printed out this morning, and I'll pass this around, but. Um, I printed out the uh, social media report from Facebook, um, and this is just, you know, kind of a snapshot of in time. Um, interestingly enough, this is the one year anniversary of when I started. Oh, oh, happy anniversary. It pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> if you know that, we'd make the cake. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about this when I started. I think that the. Um, the Visit St. Jen Facebook page had about 200 likes. Now it's up to 629. In the past week, we've had a total reach on that page of 2,493 um, and 242 people engaged. So people are communicating actively on that page. And that, of course, with the French Festival, you would expect for that to be a high week. but. That's really good to see that one growing and what we try to do with the other two Facebook sites. And for those who may not be familiar, we have St. Genevieve spelled out, St. Genevieve as S-T-E, um, and then we have Visit St. Gen. Um, so St. Genevieve, so the other ones have roughly 3,000 likes a piece. So we tried to build awareness between these pages for the Visit St. Jen pages um, and, and kind of cross-pollinate with the information that we post so that they're aware of things like the French Festival, um, even if they may not be people who are on the Visit St. Jen page. So if you have a personal Facebook page, if um, you could just share the Visit St. Jen or invite people to like it, we'll continue to build those. Um, Every now and then we will boost the page through uh, paid, um, you know, paid boosting on Facebook. Um, but the, what you would consider organic likes are um, sort of the way of the future in terms of Facebook, um, unless you want to be paying for it all the time. And we only do that on special occasions. So um, I'm just gonna pass this around and you can see the other, so it starts out with the St. Jen, then St. spelled out, and then visit St. Jen, and you'll see that there's also, um, I am an administrator on the St. Jen Downtown Renewal Project, so theirs is uh, caught on the bottom of that second page there. Um, and. Can we change the look since, to make them all the same? Um, well, there's not much difference in the look on Facebook. Um, you know, talking about the banner. Yeah, I don't know that that would actually be a good thing. I think that it would, what I'm trying to do is gradually help people migrate over and share the other page. We don't want to kill those earlier pages, but we just want people to be more aware of uh, the Visit St. Jen activities. Um, if we made them all look the same, in my opinion, then people would not be uh, picking up on the Visit St. Jen one. Um, for what that's worth. It just seems funny to have three of them. Really. Mm -hmm. Well, it, in a way, it's it's a way to increase our outreach. Yeah. You know, because people identify with different things. You know, you might be, um, you might your natural tendency to you know to identify yourself with St. Genevieve might come from one direction or another, and we just want to make sure whatever direction you come from, we've got a message waiting for you. I think you have the ability of when you post on one, it can post on all three of them mm -hmm. and to, to ease the burden of Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing I wanted to point out was um, 
We frequently get requests for information on outdoor activities, and one of these, probably the most frequently requested, is um, hiking, followed by biking, followed by um, access to the river and people who want to put in a canoe or a kayak, sometimes a pleasure boat too, but not too many of those. Um, and so we're making steps in that direction um, with the next thing in your packet, and that is um, we put together um, kind of a very quick and easy, this one's copied in black and white, but this is um, a guide with descriptions of how long the trails are, how rugged they are, how easy they are, and um, directions to get there from the Welcome Center, and then also um, the street address for it in case people use Google Maps or GPS or something, they just have to key in the street address to um, get their point-to-point -point directions. Um, so this is now available down at the Welcome Center, and um, we'll see. I, I think it'll be a helpful thing. Right now in the brochure, there's a little bit about um, each of the, um, you know, each of the hiking areas, but. And even on the, the website, um, one of the things, I don't know, maybe we want to put a, a, a hot link to a brochure, a PDF brochure, it's in a PDF format on the website, so if somebody wants to print it out at home, they could print it out. Print this out? Mm -hmm. Sure. The other thing I might suggest, I, you know, we really haven't spent much on, I don't think we've spent anything on printing and binding this year, because we did the brochure out of last year's budget. You may want to get some of those printed rather than, are you getting them printed in color or? Um, we're kind of doing them as we need them rather than printing a large amount, but we, I suppose we could. Um, you're just, you're just copying them as you need yeah. to. Right, right. I mean, it's just a thought. Sure. Um, what? I mean, could you just print them as you need them? Well, that's what That's doing. what we're doing, right. Well, but you're printing them in black and white. Well, I just did that for the meeting. We can print them out in color. Right. We have a color printer. Um, Do you give a lot, a lot of them out? Well, we just came up with this. Oh, this is just, brand new. Yeah. Um, people ask for it all the time, though. Oh. Yeah. And we have, you know, the state has um, uh, information about specific trails, but um, like for instance, a lot of people aren't even aware of Magnolia Hollow mm -hmm. Conservation Area and the fact that you can stand on the bluffs and look out over the river, um, you know, and there, there are different activity areas there. It's actually one of the few that has good handicap access. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's, you know, 10 miles north of here. Well, I guess we can just it's actually see, closer than Han is. Mm -hmm. See how it goes yeah. in terms of how many you have to hand out. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I would suggest maybe we put it as a printable mm -hmm. on, the, on the website. My reason for bringing it was really just to point out that we're trying to be responsive to what people are asking for and um, give them you know, additional uh, tools rather than just verbally. You know, Sometimes we'll give them a copy of a county map and highlight it for mm -hmm. them. But, um, this kind of gives them an overview, and maybe they'll take, you know, a Han, uh, a Han uh, hike this time, and maybe they'll say, you know what, this Magnolia Hollow looks cool. Maybe I'll go back there and do that mm -hmm. next time. So there's a lot of interest in outdoor activities. Or hikers, spenders. There's lots of different kinds of hikers. Um, typically, I mean, if they're at the Welcome Center, obviously they're, you know, here. They're going to do some historic homes, maybe have some lunch, and then go out. Sometimes they'll come in and spend the night, and they'll do some things in town, and then the next day they plan to spend it, you know, out. I mean, I think it's, I, I never thought about it. I mean, it's, but it's pretty impressive that we have this variety of In fact, Hong and Pickle are known as mm -hmm. the best oh, yeah. hiking in Missouri. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We've been kind of discussing or brainstorming maybe having a hiking fest or something like that for a whole month, uh, a different trail each no weekend and they have to come promoting in promoting the hiking opportunities in our area at the expense of not promoting something else if those aren't people who are going to come to town and right but we can buy food we're and trying to figure out how too. to get them into town we using get lots, actually we get lots who yeah. say we're headed out to pickle creek now okay good yeah. so it might behoove us to build on that mm -hmm. well that's what that's what we we're kind of thinking about if we can get it so you, you get a badge or something if you've hiked four trails during mm -hmm. your month and you have to come mm -hmm. to the Welcome Center to get it. It brings forces them to come into town. 
Yeah, a lot of them work do those pins, yeah. hat pins. Stump nagels. Mm hmm Yeah. So it just and, and to your point, Martin, um, in terms of the interest level of people for active outdoor activities, um, as I said, hiking is one that we get questions about all the time. Um, another is biking, and I would really love to see if someday we could get, um, we've already checked with the insurance company on the whole idea of having bikes at the Welcome Center that people could, you know, rent and ride around town, which would be cool. Um, finding a way to finance that or finding someone who wants to donate some bikes, either way. Um, I think that would be a step in the right direction and kind of build awareness. Um, you know, look at all the promotion of the Katy Trail running through, you know, the I-70 corridor. Um, and those people, you know, they're avid outdoor enthusiasts. They spend money in the shops and restaurants. They, you know, they bring people there. They, if they stay for very long, they're staying overnight. Have you started thinking about a brochure for biking? I have not started yeah. thinking about that. I mean, we have the Mississippi River Trail, I guess, or there's a biking trail that runs through the county, but other, maybe a short biking trail, a city. Mm hmm Loops, Mass. kind yes. of short, yeah. nearby loops. Yes, yeah, with points of interest or something that we could do a similar thing to what you've done here, but just do it for biking. Well, and then the third area is, as I said, the, the river access. People want to know if they can um, kayak and canoe um, and where they can get to the river. I mean, just in general, people want to know where they can see the river, where they can get their mm -hmm. picture taken with the river, where they can put into the river. And um, I was, I mean, this is sort of, I've, I've been thinking lately because I've been in the position for a year and I know that was one of the very first things that I thought was a good idea was to embrace the river to a greater degree. And I know we've kind of been talking about that recently. And um, Bob was asking me the other day about what kinds of things do I need support with? Do we need support with? What could I ask the committee for? And I think that, um, you know, getting committee members, members from the community together to work with me on projects to move forward on certain things, I think would be probably my greatest wish so that, you know, we can make headway in some of these areas. The, um, there's an old, I was, I, I discovered last week that the, the, the ferry used to dock somewhere a little north of where it, the landing is now. Are you, okay? Yes, that is true, about 100 yards. It's called Little Rock Landing. And who controls that real estate? Tower Rock, as far as I know. North of the, well, no, Mississippi Well, I think it's Burlington Mr. Northern, I think, but, but I'm not sure. That's what I'm asking. And I mean, if that was used before, can it be used again? Okay, or has the course of the river changed? I'm not sure that there used to be a gradual slope down, and that's where you drove. Um, and I wonder if the reason they changed it was because the river has changed. I'm not sure there's that gradual slope there anymore. I mean, I, I, you know, you got Mississippi Line coming. I don't know where they, they have a fence that goes across the railroad tracks to the north, and I don't know how close that is. I mean, I mean you should be able to look on the, the land. I can't, like, yeah, I can't see the where the old one was on the areas. Yeah. I know where it was. I can show it to you if you can look at the well, area. watching submarine races? Does that go <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> there actually was a submarine that came down the river in World War II. What? Yes. <laughs> That's cool. So, so what your point was, was that might be an alternate place well, for people to safely. I, I, I know the, the kind of really nice piece of property just south of the current landing is owned by the railroad and they don't want you to right up here, right? Yeah. Is yeah. That, that's the current levy, I mean the current ferry right there, right. isn't it? Yeah. And you got that little road that runs to the south, uh, right right after you cross the railroad tracks. Oh, that, mm -hmm. that dirt trail. road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. But it doesn't go towards the river, it just goes along the, doesn't it? I think it just goes along the shore. No, I don't think, I'm not talking about access but I, it, it looked like a great place to clear out and put some benches oh, okay. in it but it's it's Burlington Northerners and they won't they won't 
cooperate with us in any way that increases people, encourages people to cross their track. track. Yep. And I'm wondering, if, again, if that old landing site is somebody other than Burlington Northern, because I, I would ask the levy district, well, not the levy district, it, the, uh, the Port Authority who okay. owns the ferry about that, who owns all that, that property. <laughs> I think you know, and to your comment about having committee members work on things, either you know maybe you want, want to come up with a list of things. I mean, we've talked that about we would the, like to, sure. the, the tear off map, the a biking mm -hmm. trail kind of thing or, or map thing. But if you could come up with a list, I mm -hmm. think that would be helpful and your priorities. Sure, thank you. Actually, maybe that would be a good thing when we have that public meeting in August. I know we don't usually get more people, but if there were some more people, then maybe they would want to, you know, say, well, I'd be willing to help with right. this project or that project. Or... Okay. 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 Um, if that meeting could be advertised half as much as that downtown renewal project town hall meeting was, mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot of people who advertising to be involved, and you know, flyers out and, you know, and we got a really good response for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that this would necessarily get that much, but if the word got out a little more than just, yeah. you know, somebody who's watching this on TV mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Yeah. Well, we yeah, need we to do some flyers the, and Facebook. the place and the time. And yeah, get it. Because I, mean, I remember we had some down at the educational office before I mean before the one we had at the pack here and before had a pretty good yes. showing I yes, was pretty did. happy with that yep. maybe we could but then we had one here and nothing so so okay. um, advertise well maybe we can promote just put some flyers like mm -hmm. with that town hall meeting the Okay. Um, so then the next thing I wanted to point out, and this was in the minutes from the last meeting, which we didn't really go over, but one of the things that Bob mentioned at the last meeting was that businesses needed to go online and check, review, update their listings on the Visit Mo website. And so um, that deadline was June 6th. And um, so on June 6th, we went and looked to see um, how things were coming and who wasn't on there that maybe needed to be. And so that last page in your packet shows um, right after the hiking trails. It shows the things that weren't on there at all and that we added or tried to add. Um, we've gotten some bump backs on yeah. some of these because um, like I think for instance Joyce and Choice they didn't have any open hours so one of the things that is a red flag on the state end if you don't have you know like Monday through Friday nine to five type out not those type hours but if you don't have hours at all they'll kick it back out of the system so I just wanted you to know that this yeah. was um, and you added those all through the welcome center so you're the administrator of those well, I think the person can still administer it, um, but that's what we did. Okay, I good. just didn't, I, I didn't want to let it slip by. Yeah. I've been starting to get on the ones I control, I've been getting notices that it'll, these particular ones will be included in the print volume. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. They don't always include all the ones on the website on the print volume, but selected ones, uh, they, they do. Yeah. So... Awesome. And because I'm looking at it, and because I had a conversation on this topic yesterday, I'll just throw this out there. Um, the Bove Amaro House, everyone probably is aware, has been closed for several weeks because they had something cave in underground. Yes. 
And so um, I spoke with Donna Rouch yesterday on another topic, and I said, hey, how's it coming? Do you need some, you know, moral support or anything else um, to encourage uh, the state agency that they report to to give us some support locally? They have sent their state um, archaeologist here, and they examined underground, and they gave them permission to fill in the cistern uh, with rock and sand and whatever. She was telling me the whole thing. But uh, the long and short of that is that although um, she said because they won't get to you know, do an archaeological dig for what might be in there, um, the good news is it will be filled in and the Amaro House will be open again soon. Yeah. I talked to her this morning and I guess she just did get permission yesterday to, mm -hmm. to do that. She said within the next two weeks it would mm -hmm. be filled in. I think their maintenance guy's off this today and he, yeah. he's going to look at that on Monday. Which is very good because the Amaro is just such an important house and it's one of the ones featured on the passport ticket and people don't like it when you sell them a ticket and they don't get to go mm -hmm. and see something, you know. So um, if we can get that house to be not just open again, but once it gets open to have consistency in hours, I think will be very important because we want to have happy customers. So um, are, we, are we adjusting the price of the tickets? Over the loss of no, health. because they still save money over the individual admissions, even on the others that are included on the passport. So we just tell them that um, hang on to their passport, and if they want to come back to St. Genevieve again, they can visit the Emerald. They still get a discount on Felix Valley as part of the passport, because that's a one price right. gets for both. Right. Uh, so that, that just jumped to mind, because I saw it at the top of the list there. Um, and then the last item that you should have is um, I'm sharing this information on just that the Art Guild had shared with me. This is um, information about the 80th anniversary activities. And of course, we've had those small cards. I had those at the last meeting and shared those. Um, but this is kind of their newsletter and an update on some of their activities. Tonight, as you may know, there is a ferry ride um, celebrating the summer solstice, which was also something that was done by the artists 80 years ago. So that's really kind of cool. Um, and then, um, and then we're helping, uh, you know, to promote and raise visibility for these activities throughout the summer. I think they had a very nice turnout last weekend, which was their first weekend, and of course it coincided with French festivals, so they had um, a nice amount of foot traffic. And there's some really exciting things that they're doing. Um, and then on the topic of art, um, some of you are already aware, uh, the Welcome Center has been the recipient of a very generous donation of several pieces of art um, that were in private holdings of local families who for one reason or another um, decided that they would rather have those be on display. Um, and so we've received two uh, Charles Reinhardt paintings, oil paintings, and one sketch as a donation. And then um, three other uh, Charles Reinhardt um, pieces of art that are on loan. And so this is all this flurry of Reinhardt activity um, and his direct correlation to um, the art history here in St. Genevieve. Um, first of all, we have to find a way to make room for these in the Welcome Center, but also I'm thinking that maybe for one of the future art walks, maybe July or August, I'd like, of course, I'll coordinate it with them, but I'd like to front um, a Reinhardt exhibition at the Welcome Center and maybe invite local families who might have private holdings of Reinhardt's that they wouldn't mind putting on loan just for the period of um, this exhibition. So he was a very, um, obviously a talented artist as they all are, but um, he also had a wide variety of styles, everything from romantic landscapes to abstract studies of light to, to sketches. And I had never seen Reinhardt sketches of our local historic homes before seeing these. Yeah, so it was really, it was, it was an eye opener for me because I have seen several of his things um, and hadn't seen sketches of historic homes before. So. so that's new and exciting and you're the first to know, so there's that. Um, I think it'll actually, it will be out in the paper next week too. The mayor came down and he did a picture with him. So. Um, I think that hits the high points. Okay. <laughs>
Why don't we just go to some of the other items? Sure. Anything new on the Discover America videos that they talked about when those? Yes, are? I um, called up to Missouri um, Division of Tourism this morning, and um, they were told the middle of June. So um, I think my call prompted them to follow up, and they're going to get back to me on an answer. Um, we were one of several communities that took advantage of the reduced prices on this professionally made video. And I think maybe um, we should know something in the next couple of weeks based on that conversation that I had this morning. Okay. Tourism signage, ferry signage. So this is um, down at the Welcome Center. We have parking lot A, which is for cars, and parking lot B, which is for buses and RVs. And we have actually had buses pull into the car parking lot, and then they're in a real situation. Oh, yeah. And there are several, for whatever reason, predates me, or yeah, predates me. Um, there are several blank sign Post. posts down there along um, Market Street in front of the Welcome Center. So my plan is to use one of those for a sign that looks like this, so the buses will pass the car parking lot and then turn left into the bus and RV parking lot. Um, and then this one is one that um, we get a lot of, um, people who are going north on Main Street and you know 1.6 miles is a fair distance and you want them to know that it's not just like right at the end of Main Street that you're going to get to the river so you need to keep going so um, this was actually something that um, downtown renewal had asked for too because several of the shop owners down there have this question come up all the time so this will go on to another one of the blank sign posts that's down there kind of across from the Main Street Inn um, and so, and this one, of course, since it ties into the wayfinding signs, we're going to make it look similar to those wayfinding right. signs. So it all is consistent. I assume based on your mm -hmm. comments that will have to go to the board for just approval or can the city put up signs or whatever? I think these are already types board, of signs that we yeah, had before. Yeah, the board needs to approve signs that restrict someone's right to use the public right away. These aren't restrictive, okay. these are informative. Okay. Okay, good. Um, uh, the other thing was the tourism signs that we've been discussing. Yes, would you like to update on that? Well, uh, Sandra had come up with this idea, well, similar to Kimswick, of putting directional signs on certain corners to point out businesses or historic sites or whatever. And uh, we had a meeting and uh, we identified, I think it was six locations. Maybe off. Six or eight. Maybe. Yeah. And then we went out, uh, Lawrence Myers and myself uh, took pictures of various places and we put a report together and I think you provided some input as to what we have to, approvals we have to get for that. And I think we just need to have another meeting and kind of decide, uh, is it going to be a post or, uh, or an un unobstructive post <laughs> and sign or, or something that's movable. Mm -hmm. So. Just, uh, at the, one of the previous meetings, I had sketches of this. Do you, does everybody remember what we were talking about? I actually have a photo of one. Um, on, do you remember, Beth? Those? Mm -hmm. Okay, well then I'll pull it up. Um, uh, it's a race. <laughs> I got lots of pictures of <laughs> Grandkids. You got it. <laughs> oh, I got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> you were first. Oh, wow. <laughs> Looks like that. So it would have oh, individual yeah. oh, names of businesses and also like historic attractions. So you would know if you were standing yeah, at the is corner. Is your picture the same mm -hmm. as his? A little bit different. A little bit different. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is prettier. We have tried to do that. <laughs> it was a nicer yeah. day when I took Listen, not all of Kimswick is that attractive. <laughs> so, so is that is up in Kimswick? Yes. Yeah. It is. Let me see again. So, um, so in some places we have the ability to put a post probably and in other places we might need to do a planter there was some concern with the planter because of maintenance breakability that kind of thing but um, either way i think it would be helpful for people because um, even though they know the lay of the land as they're um, driving around if you're coming down market street do you turn right to get to the Bulldog mm -hmm. or, you know, and a lot of times people yeah. have to make the loop because of the one-way street and then they get a little turned around, you know, mm -hmm. so then they've gone 
left and left and left again, and then they're there and they're like, am I going this way for the Bull Duke or am I going that way for the ferry or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So um, anyway, so that's what we're trying to do. And it also is easy to change. Each one of these has, um, here's a close up of the little screws so that you can, you oh, know, let's say okay. that Monia's yeah. went out of business and you can just mm -hmm. take that one off and. Um, I did. <laughs> right. That's why I used it as my example. I didn't want to use somebody yeah. who's currently in business. <laughs> Bad juju. Exactly. Okay. Bad karma. So we'll have another meeting on, on that and then come forward with a recommendation. Yeah. yeah. Nothing happens fast, but um, I've actually... Bad things happen fast. Yeah. <laughs> well, good things we want to happen, so. Um, okay. Uh, Fourth of July plans. I know the chamber is planning their annual fireworks display and everything. We wanted to try to do something a little bit different this year and add a little bit of patriotism back into Fourth of July. And, uh, the chamber is planning an event at 12 o'clock at the courthouse steps and it will include a ringing of bells from the church, which is very traditional in America for honoring the Fourth of July. They did it after the signing. Uh, we'll have a reading of the Declaration of Independence, uh, singing of uh, the Star Spangled Band. Just a short event, maybe some... You said at the church. Pardon? The courthouse. The courthouse is where we held, but I'm, we're, we're working with the churches to have them ring their bells for like three months. All the churches. That's what we'd like to have, yeah. It's that, yeah. I thought you said one church. Well, that's what I've got permission for one oh. so far, but I'd like to get I like the all of them idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can someone... Email me a little blurb about that, and I'll put it on yeah. this too. Uh, Dina's uh, actually coordinating. I've been working with her on. Okay. But uh, I'd like to add that to. That. Yeah. We just uh, ringing of the bells. Yes. Yeah. Or, or you mean the speeches? Well, the whole thing. The whole it's mm -hmm. just, and it's going to be very short. I, I would imagine less than thirty minutes. But it's just to kind of, we'd like to have Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts there, uh, an honor guard from the VFW, uh, the militia. Yeah, the, who is we? The chamber and myself working on this. Really, Great idea. Yeah. I think Eric's working on the street closure for that short period of time. But just uh, when you look back at history and look at how we celebrated our holidays such as Memorial Day and Fourth of July, it was a lot more than just picnics and uh, mattress that sort sales. of thing. Pardon? Mattress sales. <laughs> <laughs> more civic yeah, types more civic. of things. And, yeah. and we just think it's a, it's a good thing to do. So go try it. Mm -hmm. May not have anybody show up, but... Uh, well, I mean, it, I'm really pleased this was everybody with the food turnout for the French Heritage Festival. Is, it, 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 is there anything we can identify to explain it, or is it just kind of momentum building? The weather was so pretty. The weather was nice, and for me, that was a big thing that made me want to get out that night after my long day at work. I thought, the weather is too nice for me to sit in my house. I need to go down and enjoy be the down music. there, enjoy yeah. it, and yeah. Okay. But I, th I so, think the other thing is, too, that this year they started a lot earlier. Yes, and that's true. And advertising, yeah. yeah. I mean, but last the year before it was like two weeks or three weeks before they started on it. It's hard to build that momentum. It wasn't quite that, but it was. You're, <laughs> it was close. It, that might be a stretch, but it's not far off. Yeah. yeah. So we started this year in um, January, but really February. And then we had the first flyer out during Garden Walk, which is you know, a full month before the event, but it's an important event because you've got people coming here who then have something in their hands, a reason to come back. And and the, the small flyers too, I, I think adding the logo on those has kind of helped tie it all together. We have some people who are putting those into um, the brochure, you know, when they're like have bed and breakfast guests, you know, so they'll get those. But, um, Martin, I think you're right too, momentum. And Dennis Stromat, who is always our featured entertainment for the evening for that, he is gaining quite a following too. And so we, on our Facebook, we put uh, video clips of Dennis Stromat and kind of, you know, tried to play up that aspect of it. 
there were also additional things going on in conjunction with the French Festival this year, so it's the, the festival itself is growing a little bit more. Certainly we benefited by the increased art activities that were going on. Um, and I didn't mean to downplay any effort anyone else put in by but saying the weather. But the weather was incredible, yeah. Because there was, I mean, yeah. obviously lots of other factors yeah. too, but that was just the first thing that, yeah. that popped in my head. So. Well, and weather makes a big difference. I think there are still things that we could do to improve the timing of events during the day. Um, just, yeah, I hate to have this be a, a blip. And, you know, go back to the level of last year or the year mm -hmm. before. Uh, well, for instance, the if you, know, if you know the factors that contributed to success, you can't control the weather. Right. Just build on them. But once you get people hooked on an event per se, and and we often have locals even who say, "God, I had so much fun," mm -hmm. you know, and and people are now starting to comment on social media, "I love the French Festival. I can't wait," you know, that kind of thing. Okay. But also the Felix Valley House this year added. Well, we had the Malise encamped in their backyard, but they added different um, attractions during the day, different activities during the day, and they promote those activities through their site pretty heavily. And they had over, I know it was over 500 people through the Felix Valley site that day from start to finish, which is incredible. I mean, just the Welcome Center, we had more than 100 people more than we had last year on the same day. And I felt badly because based on last year's numbers, I only scheduled one person. And there were times when she had a line from the counter to the door. And that's like, we don't have that except for Jure de Fet. So that was pretty yeah, The first year that, that was here, three years ago, I commented that yet, if you didn't have a place to stay, because it was really hot that year, you know, you, you, you came for the opening ceremony, and then there wasn't anything for two hours. Mm -hmm. And then you do a two-hour event, and then there'd be another hour before there's anything else going on. So, you, you know, you kind of had to have a home base in order to enjoy the event. Otherwise, you cool off. Kind of hanging around. <laughs> you know, one of the things so, this I'm time, not... I think that there was more to do. I mean, you could come, you could spend three hours here and have a good time because there's something going on right. for whatever three-hour period. We should yeah. always remember that if it's very hot weather, I think it, I don't know if it's the 911 emergency people or the fire department has uh, cooling, cooling fans that they set up for injured effect. We may look, always look at the weather that's coming up for an event and see if we can have a cooling station or whatever. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, so. Um This is off the subject, but it's a work session. So I think that's, uh, yeah. I think that's important. Last year, after Jure de Fet, there was complaints about the cell system being unable to process the phones and uh, I've already contacted things. both AT&T and Big River Telephone. AT&T does not have a portable cell tower available the weekend of Jure de Fet. Um, it's possible that Big River Telephone might be able to do something for us. They're supposed to get back to me. It's been about two weeks ago. Yeah, this won't help this year, but Verizon but, uh, yeah. is buying the uh, towers that were another provider, but they're they're moving into the territory. And but I, but I think they, the request so they could be a third party. I mentioned this to them, and they said, oh, "Well, we do is, is uh, the, we just bring in extra capacity for that weekend." Mm -hmm. But I think with AT and T, you know, they've really so, got a problem in downtown St. Genevieve anyway, from what I hear. Mm -hmm. That uh, to get it on their schedule for a repeater mm -hmm. for Jure de Fet next year, if they can't do it this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, were you suggesting that maybe French Festival we should look at the same thing, or not really? I don't think it. I don't think you have that problem. Right. Uh, it's just not that. Could I mean? If, yeah. If you get more vendors and. Right. As you did this year, next year, and I guess you, but I was thinking more in terms of just because it triggered my thought process. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have the same problem this year with your fat. Sounds like we are. Okay. Other things, uh, I think the chamber was working on uh, updating the schedule for their social media training. They had not, and I have not heard from Tina as to when it was actually going to be rescheduled, but I know they're planning on doing that. Um, 
I'd ask you for kind of an update on hiking biking trail uh, on the north. Well, end. funny since you asked me. Uh, you heard the story before, but the engineer completed their work on the hiking biking trail three years ago, and progress was slowed because of problems with the opening at the levee gate and right-of-way from the railroad for one of the features of the trail, which was a parking lot at the end of the, the, the landing. We resolved the issue of the narrowness of the floodgate by eliminating the biking part of the trail, so it's a biking trail. You know, you had it 10 feet and you couldn't get 10 feet. And we've addressed their safety concerns with signage. So they're okay, even though they understand the hikers have to actually kind of get in the street in order to get back on the trail. And I don't want to cast stones here, but I can't imagine you would come up with a plan for a grant for a project that uses land you haven't arranged to use. But they did. And the railroad, Burlington Northern, would not give permission to the city to, to use the land they own at, at the land for this, this, this parking lot. So it just sat. And I asked, why was it sitting? And, and the answer was, well, because we can't put it in the parking lot. I said, well, why don't we eliminate the parking lot? I said, well, we'll have to get permission from the state. And I said, well, has anybody asked for permission from the state? Well, no, we haven't asked it. So we went to the, back to the state and said, we want to take the parking lot out. It took a while, but they said, okay. So plans were submitted, the state reviewed them, and they came back with 72 comments. Several of which had to do with either changes in the regulations, their design standards, or things like Citizens Electric's permission or on the utility line relocations were now four years old. They wanted to make sure that everybody was still on board with the same plan. So we talked to the engineer who's Remember, he's already been paid for his work, <laughs> and said, and he said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I was fearful that the engineer was going to say, you know, I, okay, here's my contract if you want me to do all this stuff. Fortunately, he didn't. He accepted responsibility and said he would make the, make the changes, but that, and, that and, and it's been a while. I understand that this is not high on his list of priorities. He's got to take care of his paying customers first rather than doing what could be considered a favor to the city. But as, after Bob talked to me, and, and, and he told me and the mayor at separate location, uh, occasions that he's got time in his schedule, and he's not going to be able to get this done. So hopefully, we'll be resubmitting to the state. I can't say how long, because you know, he's working it into his, his schedule, but let's say 30 days. And um, if, if if that's the case, we'll still be able to get advertisements for bids out and get work done this summer. If it takes 90 days, you know, we're kind of pushing the end of the construction season. That means we can't do it. Just kind of makes it problematic. Is there a drawing someplace of what this involves? A simplified there's drawing? A, no, there's a set of construction plan. Okay. Is there like a big front one that shows all the way up. Yeah, I mean, Who has that? This Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay. No, Jimmy does It's just sitting back here. Okay. And Pam recently reorganized it, so I don't know where she <laughs> <laughs> where she moved it to, but it's back there somewhere. Okay. Very good. So I think that fits in again with what we were talking about with hiking, biking. Outdoor activities in general. Yep. So Martin, what you said about 
they changed the design from hiking and biking to just hiking so it didn't have to be as wide. Can bikes still use yeah, the trail? Yeah, you just can't okay. promote it as a biking trail. Got it, got it, okay. It's not like it will be like a no bicycle. Mm -hmm. Ghostbusters kind of sign. Okay, good to know. Um, okay. Upcoming events for July? Um, does anybody have anything to add? I'll add the noon event on July 4th. Did you get one? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, it's in here. It's in the uh, getting what? A dental so implant. You want to put that? On? <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate with Martin. <laughs> We're gonna have a soft diet week. Oh yeah. Dinner. I just had two of them put in. No hot dog. Festus. Dr. Revenick. Am I correct that the county fair goes Thursday through Sunday? Yes. Yes. Is that what Bob he said? They have one that will be here ten years ago. Ten years ago. That is correct. Yeah, 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 but I thought it started Thursday. <laughs> yeah, so they changed it last year and added Thursday. Uh, and last week they were on what's there. Two weeks ago they were on what's there. Thursday last. When no, I was, I was helping with the French festival, and they said that they do Thursday. Okay, I've done it. I've had one. Okay, went over. But you know they go. But you have one. Fridays in July. You're going to cut these Maybe long two, ways. Two then yeah. Where, then where are they going? The this gets emailed yeah. out to all the yeah. business owners and then surrounding schools and okay, libraries. My friend, I have a friend who's having a um, And anybody can print it out or they can just use it. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. They bring to so if it's a shrimp oh, okay. desk, it's his house. But I mean, they're going to be cut. And everybody yeah, brings. they're designed yeah. to cut in, into three and have a shrimp. Oh, okay. So you make the copies at your Nobody will bring the same thing. Oh, okay. So you give them out. Everybody puts them on their own. Like I used to do, I need to get more. I had kind of a card stock thing that I would put them on. A lot of people just do paper, or some people do colors. Or oh, okay. So it's just up to the business owner to print it out themselves. Oh, okay. See if they want to. Do we ever put on here about the Thursday night muni? No, we would have if we were. If we were doing that, we could have done it last year, but I'm just wondering mm -hmm. yeah. if there's room for it. Yeah, I can fit Just them Thursday night, 8 to 9. Right. Thursday, Bring a lawn chair. Yeah. Okay. I can fit that on there. Okay. Um, any update on the eye brochure, the Madden media? Uh, nothing new. Um, they nothing new since last meeting. <laughs> they were supposed to be getting pretty close last meeting. Yeah. Well, the thing that they did was um, my understanding of what they were going to do and their understanding of it were two different things. Theirs was going to be more conflict complicated and I'll, all I really wanted was a redirect and so as of this week that's what they're going to do and it might actually save us some money in the long run. So. Okay, anything else that anybody wants to bring up? Mm -hmm. I think for the next week I want to try to get another update on MPS. Uh, what is this? Oh, thank you Martin. Okay. So, um, these, if, if anyone wants to look at these afterwards, I didn't want to weigh down, but we've been written up in several um, magazines and online. This is a financial uh, manager's uh, magazine called Sojourns, and they did uh, about a four-page story called Bonjour St. Genevieve, a Missouri town with French flair. And so um, that was kind of nice. Um, that actually was one that Jan Braun shared with us. Um, this is an online blog. Do you remember in about February, we had a, an online blog writer who visited St. Genevieve. I did a fam tour for her, her name was Sonia Shin. And then she published two articles to theexaminer.com. So it's one of those online blog things. And, um, As opposed to those offline blogs. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So if anyone remembers Margaret Jorgensen, who used to work for um, the newspaper, she is now a writer for them. So I um, spent some time prior to the French Festival with her and sh shared some photos and some background and so on. So she posted a nice article, I'll send this one this way, about the French Festival. So we're, now we've sort of got a little body of happenings on, on the blog out there. Um, 
one of the ads that we did in the month of June, um, this was one of the cooperative things that we offered to the local businesses. Antique and Collectible News, this is a free paper that obviously are at a lot of antique malls and a lot of other places. We have them at the Welcome Centers. But all these yellow flags, and I won't go into them, that's the coverage that we got as a result of my doing a, um, a you know, an upcoming events ad and the shops each paying 25 for their little shop section. So I'll pass this one around. Reasonable 25 bucks. Very reasonable. Yeah. And so they've made us their featured community for the month of June, which was really nice. And then this is Missouri Life Magazine. This is a glossy coffee table magazine um, that's put out six times a year. Um, it's kind of Missouri's version of Southern Living. Um, so uh, we did, you know, I send them our events all the time, and sometimes they make it, sometimes, you know, there's just not enough room for everyone. But um, we now did a month. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Andrea. That's all right. So we did a full page ad. This was, they did this special section called Missouri Life Guide to Wineries, Breweries, and Distilleries. And so it's in the magazine as an eight page section, and then they do a, re a reprint of it. So we got extra copies of the reprint. So if you're looking at the reprint, you will notice, we're very excited, we are the back cover. Oh, that's Isn't nice. that cool? Yep. So, um, long story short, I contacted them in the context of um, maybe we could do a St. Genevieve page, and they said, well, we have this um, special section coming up on wineries, breweries, and distilleries, and there's no one from St. Genevieve that's advertising it. And I said, well, my God, we can't be left off the map entirely, so um, let's see if we can't fix that. So. I contacted the Route de Vin and they, um, their advertising dollars were already committed in other directions and they, I was thinking maybe I could do like a half page St. Genevieve, a half page Route de Vin with them <coughs> and they just didn't have the funds to do it so instead what I did was um, I did the, you know, an hour's drive south of St. Je St. Louis, the whole destination thing and listed all of the um, wineries within about a 30 minute drive of where we are and um, and you can see in the copy there I said, not just award-winning wines, indoor and outdoor dining and lodging choices, um, enjoy historic homes and shopping, plan to stay for several days and take it all in. So I was really excited we got the back cover of this thing. And this, we're also included in this magazine in several places. So they picked up in their um, regional event specials, they picked up the French Festival, which is again, I think one of those things that kind of helped us out. And then also, um, Bob, you'll be glad to know that they picked up our 4th of July celebration. They did a listing of all the notable 4th of July celebrations across the state. So we're listed in here too. And then the last thing is that they did an article where they're featuring um, some of Missouri's uh, top 10 places to visit outdoors. and. Um, uh, Han State Park was listed as number three and they have a nice photo in there. So we're always glad to see that. And um, this, uh, the gentleman from Missouri Life came down yesterday and I spent several hours with the him. The owner? No, the ad. Yeah, because I've, I've met the owner and had dinner with him one night and invited him and his wife to come down sometime oh, and we do a thing with him. We just I need to follow up with him. Well, good. Well, would you tell him? Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, we <laughs> that when we saw that. Yeah. They, they have a problem with that. A little that. far south. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I pushed on that a little bit, and they're actually going to give us, um, they already gave us an online um, coverage for free, and they're going to give us a discount on running the same ad in the future. Yeah, I, t I really, I gave him a hard time. I was like, you know, this is where Missouri makes us started. <laughs> really a long way from St. Louis. Exactly, exactly. We're gonna be on the New Madrid River Walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was a little disappointed by that. And here's something else I didn't know that they had in this issue, because they were only, you know, when they're promoting to me, they only told me about the wineries, breweries, and distilleries. They had this other section called golf, resorts, and spas. So if they do that again next year, I'm really hoping that um, 
you know, Chalmette might want to participate in this because they're sort of a resort and they have mm -hmm. this file up here. So, um, so anyway. Is so that missing a comma? Should it, or is it golf resorts? And there is a comma. Golf, golf comma, comma resorts. Oh, it's just okay. a frilly. It's a frilly comma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then they, sh they should treat resorts separately. They should. Um, anyway, so we're trying to get more coverage and things like this. I think some of these relationship building efforts are paying off and um, they take time, but um, it, usually it's, it's well worth it. And, and the same, um, there are two other things coming up, and I know you don't want to hear about every single thing that's going on, but there's two things that are coming up that I'm pretty excited about. The Missouri Division of Tourism. Um, sponsored a special section in Spirit, which is the, um, when you fly on Southwest mm -hmm. Airlines, it's the magazine in the seat pocket. They're doing an eight page spread. So any local tourism board that wanted to get a piece of that eight page spread at a lower price, um, and so I signed us up for this, um, we will have an ad for St. Genevieve in the July issue of Spirit Magazine. And they included us in a contest that they were running. It's, an escape or a getaway or something like that to St. Genevieve that's sponsored by Spirit, not to St. Genevieve, to Missouri, I'm sorry, sponsored by Southwest Airlines. And so there's, St. Genevieve's got a little piece of that action as well. And um, so Spirit Airlines and then, um, when does the news, Belvin News, De news Democrat summer fun guide come out? Uh, it came center. out, and I have copies down oh, okay. at the website, uh, down at the um, Welcome Center. Okay. Something else. Well, I can't remember what the other thing was at the moment, but there was another um, um, opportunity like that that we were able to take advantage of. Is there, oh, I know what it was now. I looked at Missouri Life. So. Um, Midwest Living Magazine, another um, big magazine. Um, they are um, offering, they're working with the State Diversion of Tourism to do a focus on Missouri in 2015. And so I've asked for pricing on that. I don't know, you know, if it'll be something that I'll be able to fit into the budget, but it's it would a pretty, be. usually a pretty expensive magazine. Right, but, but see when the state negotiates for a whole section at one time, like the, the um, spirit magazine thing if we had just approached them directly mm. it was literally ten times more expensive to do an ad in spirit magazine than it would be if you go through the state so to their favor one of the things that the state is really focused on now is um, you know taking advantage of their buying power uh, and and negotiations power and that's good for us so I was kind of upset earlier this year when they said, well, we're taking, you know, some of the cooperative ventures in a different direction because all I read was, well, that means fewer dollar signs for us. But when they do things like this, it actually pays off in the long run. Uh, the only other thing I had on the list was the schedule for your budget for, yes. for next year. Uh, usually we, you know, like to support and, you know, look at that and be okay. in agreement and Probably I'll just email that to you rather than. Yeah, what you you know what you're thinking about for mm -hmm. uh, what's your schedule for? Uh, She's supposed to have a budget submitted by July the first. Okay. I mean, we in the past we've come forward before the board of aldermen and. Yeah. Well, this is for review, so right. if she whatever she proposes, yeah, will be even under review in I'm July clear. for the month of July. Yeah, maybe not the but the alderman meeting where they actually discuss it is well first you meet with me and we agree on what we're going to present to the board of aldermen and part of that should be a consultation with the Tourism advisory council although they have no we just formal advise. control over the budget it's nice to go to the board of aldermen for something so, they, yeah. they endorse right okay if you'll email that out when you're ready we can Take a look at that. But it's not it's not salaries and things. No, oh, no you, we, you're not doing salaries anyway. Right? Uh, well, uh, I did last year. I mean I actually had um, worked very closely with Sue on 
you know, benefits and yeah, salaries and things like that. What? You're adding, you're proposing a part-time go to full-time. Correct. Yeah. Right. So we had to figure all those things out. So You're not doing any staff adjustments at this point? Not, no, nothing like adding another position or something. So... I guess, did Mary Elise help you with this hiking? Yes, she did. Oh, She's a... very, um, been very helpful uh, because not only is she a hiking enthusiast, she... Um, She's a tour guide. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. She's been a tour guide before. She's been a teacher before. So she kind of rolls with it. How old is she? Mary Elise? Make it sound like she's old? No. You can't <laughs> ask that question anyway. She's younger than us. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did that. She did that. You got that in your resume. You did this and that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Very good. Our final piece tonight is The Invincible Eagle by John Philip Sousa. Sousa wrote this march for his band's performance at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York in 1901. He considered naming it the Spirit of Niagara in recognition of the exposition, but decided not to localize it because he thought his new march might eventually rival the Stars and Stripes forever. Soon after its premiere, Sousa described the conviction and spirit which compelled him to compose this march, noting, It is what I call one of my sunshine marches. Some of my heavy marches are intended to convey the impression of the stir and strife of warfare but the Invincible Eagle shows the military spirit at its lightest and brightest, the parade spirit, with the bravery of uniform, the sheen of silken stands, and the gleam, gleam of polished steel. Please enjoy this march, the Invincible Eagle. <laughs> 